Hey, all snow here. Today I'm bringing you a review for a game that just came out last week that I was super excited for, Gundam Evolution. Now, before we get started and dive into this, go ahead and like and subscribe for more. Now, without further delay, let's get into it. Gundam Evolution is Gundam's first foray into the realm of hero shooters. It was developed and produced by Bandai Namco Studios, and it released just last week, September 22nd, 2022. This is a free-to-play title with some skin monetization, as well as some other monetization that we'll get into just a little bit later. Gundam Evolution at launch has a pretty solid roster with a mix of fan favorites such as Unicorn Gundam, Gundam Barbatos, and two different Zaku, a ranged version and a melee version, as well as some lesser known ones such as Mahiru, Asimar, and Methus. Overall, it was a good mix of units, but I would have liked to have seen at least one from Gundam Wing and maybe one from the Cosmic Era line of Gundam such as Verde Buster Gundam. I suspect they wanted to limit the number of stars that they had on their launch roster to give themselves room to grow with unit releases in the future. Units are split in the close, mid, and long range. There then a few of them are further split down into my, what I'll call minor roles, like Sasabi and GM have a shield that lets them fill a quasi-tank damage role, whereas stuff like Unicorn Gundam and Methus are able to perform repairs, and Gun Tank can res stuff faster, so those will fill almost a support role. But by far and large, every unit is designed to be able to contribute damage in a meaningful way to a fight. Like most FPSs and free-to-play games these days, Gundam Evolution 2 has a season pass with a total of 60 levels, and then four EX levels at the end. There's a few rewards like usual along the season pass for free-to-play players, and the premium pass unlock costs 990 EVO coins, which unlocks the ability to gain all the season pass rewards from leveling it up. Now you do have the option to spend more EVO coins to gain levels on the season pass, but it's really not worth it with the amount that you have to pay. When you complete the season pass, it returns the full 990 EVO coins, which gives you enough to purchase next season pass or spend on whatever you want. Now, my personal opinion, the cosmetics on the season pass just really aren't super impressive visually outside of a few notable pieces. While you gain a little experience on the season pass through just completing matches, there are daily and weekly challenges that give large chunks of experience. These challenges range anywhere from win one match with one of these four units to repair X units while using these units. All the daily and weekly challenges each have a set of three to four units that you have to complete the challenge with. While I personally find being forced to use certain units quite annoying, I do understand what they are going for with making people branch out from only using their favorites. There's also a set of challenges called the beginner challenges. These are challenges focused on easing the player into the game with simple things like join seven casual matches or reach player level 12. These challenges can be done with any unit you like, but there's a major annoyance that completing these are time gated due to having to log in a number of days and said counter doesn't roll over to the next day. So it potentially takes 28 days to complete the beginner challenges. The monetization is where the game really gets points off. At a glance, it seems like a standard free-to-play cosmetic shop, but a closer look at everything together really reveals the true scumminess of the system that they went with. There's four different loot boxes, two of which that use Evo coins as currency to buy, one that uses capital currency, and then gotcha tickets obtained from a season pass and beginner challenges makes up the fourth. On the topic of currencies, Gundam Evolution has three different ones. You got Evo coins, which you buy by swiping the good old credit card, capital currency, which is gained by completing the beginner challenges and from getting the level 18 and 58 on the season pass. And then there's material points. You only gain these when you open loot boxes and only when you get a duplicate drop from the loot box, at which point you only get a third of the cost of the item as material points. You can then use those to directly buy the skin that you want, or in the case of like Charzaku, you have to spend anywhere from 300 to 400 bucks before you get enough points to get it. And did I mention that that is a time limited skin within the season pass, so roughly 90 days. The game wears a shell of a mobile gacha game in terms of monetization. Units can only be bought with Evo coins, which again are paid currency or capital currency, which is hard capped to roughly 4,000 per season with units costing 1,980 each. It heavily incentivizes spending real money on the game while giving a stiff middle finger to anyone without disposable income to spend on the game for honestly game-changing units. 
esport game that's trying to market itself as an esport this is one of the dumbest things that they could have done and honestly it'll likely lead to them hemorrhaging players once overwatch 2 releases despite that game having its own issues you gain literally nothing through playing the game except for season pass levels, which if you're a free to play player only gets you a consolation prize every 10 to 15 levels. It's a horrible system and Bandai Namco should be absolutely ashamed of themselves for letting this get to launch in this state. As far as unit customization goes, you're able to obtain unit skins, weapon skins, gun ornaments, MVP scenes, stamps, and emotes from the loot boxes. The skins vary from plain to fairly detailed, not a lot of complaints from me there, honestly. You're also able to get player icons and portraits to show off in the pre-match lineup splash. The game keeps track of a great deal of stats for your own benefit with things such as win rate and kill ratio, but it also dives deeper into the stats with things like solo kills average per 10 minutes or final blows average per 10 minutes. It even tracks things such as the average time you spend on an objective per 10 minutes. I really, really like how much detail they go into for this. The game keeps track of a great deal of stats for your own benefit with things such as win rate and kill ratio, but it also dives deeper into the stats with things like solo kills average per 10 minutes or final blows average per 10 minutes. It even tracks things such as the average time you spend on an objective per 10 minutes. I really, really like how much detail they go into for this. Moving on from the negative, we come to the gameplay. This is where the game truly shines. It works just like any other hero shooter where you load into the match with five other people, select your unit, and fight over objectives. There's three types of game modes that it selects at random when your match queue pops. Point capture is a pretty standard capture hold mode where the teams are split into attacker and defender sides. The attackers try to take the first point within the time limit and if successful, a second point opens up and more time gets added. Once the round is over, the sides flip and you go again. If both teams manage to capture both points, it goes into overtime where teams get an amount of time determined by how fast they completed the objective and whichever team manages to come out on top in that one gets the win. Domination is a king of the hill type mode where teams fight over three objectives that randomly unlock. Your team gains points for holding the unlocked point and whichever team reaches 100% first or has the highest percentage at the end of time wins. Super simple, super fun, and an absolute bloodbath. Destruction is a fairly interesting game mode where again teams are split into attackers and defenders, but the goal of this mode is for the attackers to arm a mega charge at one of two of locations and defend it long enough for it to go off. If successful, it unlocks the second set of locations to try and do it again. In this mode, there's also secondary objectives that the attackers can capture that spawns them closer to the main objectives. However, defenders can also capture them to force them back to the default spawn. As with point capture, once the time limit expires or both objectives are destroyed, teams switch sides and go again. Gundam Evolution is a great entry into the hero shooter market with exciting, fast-paced gameplay and pretty decent gunplay. The units are all well-designed and it really hits a good spot for a Gundam fan. The game would easily be a solid 8.5 out of 10 for me, but unfortunately the monetization of the game on top of the hard limit of free-to-play currency puts a really, really sour taste in my mouth, enough so that in the end I have to give it a 5 out of 10. If you don't mind heavy gotcha mechanics with FOMO and severe time gating, it's a great game and you should definitely check it out. That brings me to the end of my review for Gundam Evolution, a really solid game absolutely ruined by FOMO and poor monetization. So what do you think? Do you like the game? Do you have any specific concerns about the monetization or the balance? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, my name is Snow. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more and uh, we'll see you again next time. Have a good one.